Once upon a time, I thought this game had the best graphics in the world, this was the hottest girl in gaming, and this was an ugly game for babies. I was wrong on all three. Let's talk about it. I've been playing games for almost 30 years, but despite all that time, my stance on video game graphics can be summed up in three simple phases over about three decades. In phase one, from around 1990 to 2000, I only cared about one thing. Is the game fun? I didn't care if it was ugly, didn't care about art style, didn't care about music, didn't care what system it's on. If it's fun, I'm down. In Phase 2, around 2000 to 2010, I became obsessed with graphics, lighting, polygon count, realism, anything to make games look more like real life. The acceleration of 3D game development coincided directly with my teenage years, and all I wanted was for video games to be taken seriously. Gaming isn't for babies anymore. Games have real people that look like real people. These are bigger and better and more seriouser than even the movies, and they're gonna be really important someday. And then phase three rolled out, 2010 to today. Today, I only care about one thing. Is the game fun? We've come full circle. Some of my favorite games of all time are straight up ugly. You could say it's an intentional style choice or whatever, but let's be real. Some of these games look gross compared to what else is on the market. And it doesn't matter. I don't care anymore. If a game's fun, it's fun. There's something truly hilarious about relating more to myself as a five-year-old than when I was a 15-year-old, but game history has been kind of funny like that. And sometimes it's a good time laughing at yourself. I've gathered three short stories from that inglorious Phase 2 graphics-obsessed era of my life. It's an awkward time, it's an embarrassing time, and now it's time to relive it. The biggest thing I think of when it comes to this era is Shenmue. And Shenmue, the role-playing game for the Dreamcast, was finally shown at E3. According to Sega, Shenmue's depth, animation, and graphic sophistication could give Final Fantasy developers a run for their money. Shenmue was released on the Sega Dreamcast in the very last days of the year of 1999, and it was probably the first game to really get me to care about graphics. At its time, it was the most expensive game ever made by far. Up to this point, developers were just getting used to making games in 3D at all. If you look at an old character's face from something like Deus Ex or GoldenEye, it just looks like a melted mess. Shenmue was the first game I ever played where people somewhat resembled people. And it wasn't just the pure details of the characters that caught my eye, but also the impressive amount of freedom and exploration. Almost every little door, cabinet, light, store, NPC, machine, whatever, had some kind of unique way to interact with it. Heck, you even had to interact with the cutscenes, because almost all of them were quick time events. It was the first game I ever played with such an open world, and it was also the first game I played that used an in-game timer with NPCs and routines. I know what you're thinking. Didn't Majora's Mask do that for- No, it didn't. Shenmue is somehow older than Majora's Mask by a couple of months. And that's what I'm getting at. Shenmue, for those couple of months at the beginning of the year 2000, it looked unlike anything I had ever played before. It made me feel like my Nintendo 64 and PlayStation games were stupid. The irony, of course, is that today I would much rather play Majora's Mask any day over Shenmue. I fired it back up a year or two ago, and I couldn't believe how hard it was to play. Ignoring the voice acting, which is excruciating. Yo, Mark, I need you to come tomorrow at 9 a.m., okay? Yeah, sure. There's something we gotta do before work. Before work, really? It's just an unbearably slow game. Turning and running in one direction, and plotting from conversation to conversation until you finally find the one NPC that knows the thing that lets you keep moving forward. That one huge thing that made Shenmue unique back in 2000 was its unbelievable graphics and attention to detail in open world. But 20 years later, that isn't so unique anymore. I wouldn't say it looks terrible the way some other 3D games look terrible today, but compared to games like Yakuza, Sleeping Dogs, GTA, 
They've all taken this concept and run with it so far forward that it feels impossible to go back to Shenmue. Even just a couple years later, by the time Shenmue 2 dropped, especially when it was ported to the Xbox in 2002, it already looked muddy and dated compared to technology advancements at the time. Now, just a couple days ago, I saw the newest trailer for the long-developed and Kickstarter-backed Shenmue 3. And once again, by today's standards, it looks dated. Those old glory days where Shenmue was the king of gaming visuals were pretty short-lived, but they did give me a taste of what realistic visuals could do, and we were hungry for more. We were also... thirstier. Mom know about this? Who? Oh. This is a tough chapter to reopen. The rise of 3D games and 3D characters gave us the worldly desires of creating sexy dudes and ladies that look just like the ones in real life. Nah, I've got an open mind. I'm not here to judge. I'm not here to kink shit. No, you know what? I am here to kink shame. What was wrong with all of us? No one's a bigger example here than Tomb Raider's Lara Croft, who was used as a sex icon for years following her late 1996 debut. She was in commercials, magazine covers, posters, all over the place with renders like this, trying to get us to know how hot and sexy she is. Now these old blow-up doll look-alike renders are pretty hideous in their own right, but have you actually played old school Tomb Raider? In-game, she doesn't even look like this. She looks like this, this shambling heap of twigs and flesh, sticks for arms, hips thinner than her head. How on earth was this something that anyone enjoyed visually? In any capacity? And Lara doesn't get the full blame here. Pretty much any 3D character during this era was hideous. I remember everyone going on at school. Oh, Cloud's so hot, Tifa's so hot. And hey, keep in mind, this was when this game was new. I'm talking pre-remakes, pre-Advent Children, pre-Last Order anime. I'm talking like Final Fantasy VII just came out. How did we fall in love with blocks? Did we just make it up? Did we pretend these characters looked good? I think one problem we all have is something I like to call cutscene goggles. We see one cutscene or image from a game manual where a character looks slightly attractive, and then we like to pretend that they looked that good the entire game. Well. Here's Cloud and Tifa in a cutscene. Man, I'm not even seeing it here. I had to look at this for over 50 hours and somehow came to the conclusion that there were attractive characters in this video game. This is madness. There were so many crushes on these big pixelated bodies that I'm ashamed we were part of. Soul Calibur, Naked Raiden. Now, I'm not saying you can't have a crush on a video game character, especially with today's technology, but like, 96 to 2006? That was an extreme thirst. The Wind Waker has been getting fans in a tizzy ever since it was unveiled. Because it looks like a living, breathing cartoon, some have decided to give it the cold shoulder. This might be a bold statement, but I think the early previews for The Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker, were some of the whiniest I have ever seen a fan base in my life. For years, Nintendo was the poster child for abundantly colorful and fan-friendly games. In a world of evolving game graphics, realism, and violence, there was a distinct period where it was considered uncool to be a Nintendo fan. It didn't help that the other consoles looked like this and this, and our console looked like a big purple lunchbox. But we had hoped that The Legend of Zelda would finally give us that one big dark fantasy game. I mean, the Nintendo 64 let us play as cool older adventurers, and the Space World demo for the next Zelda game in 2000 looks like a new mature take on the franchise. What is that? Oh god no. Oh please no! Not like this! Oh, I wanted people to stop making fun of me for playing kitty games and you went and turned my one big boy game into another kitty game! You gotta be kidding me! There's no way I'm spending my $50 bill on this! And that's what the average Zelda fan around my age sounded like when we heard about this new art direction. Many dismissively called the new title Zelda, a play of words making fun of the game's new cell shaded visuals. And of course, like most things in today's video, we could not be more wrong. 
All those games trying to push the envelope and look as realistic as possible back in 2003? They look terrible now. They're obsolete relics. But Wind Waker is one of the only games of the early 3D era to have survived the test of time. Its bright colors, high contrast, fluid animations, and expressional characters have actually made it one of the most beautiful games of all time. It's also an absolute blast to play, giving us one of the freshest takes on the Zelda lore and world in the franchise's history. I was so dumb and salty that I didn't even buy this title on launch day. And if it wasn't for a friend who convinced me to play his copy and give the game a shot, I might have missed out on one of my favorite games of all time. By building around the strengths of early engines and delivering a modern take on the original Zelda art style, Nintendo proved that despite all of our whining, they knew what they were doing. It turns out we were the real babies all along. It's so weird looking back on all this. It took a couple years, but after enough examples like today's stories, I think I outgrew the novelty of only caring about realism in games. One big culprit is the modern graphics wall. As time moves on, I think it's finally becoming less and less reasonable for companies to push resources into a stronger graphic design in hardware. A lot of people still consider The Witcher 3 to be the most beautiful game of our era, and that game is over four years old now. The time when your game could look obsolete in just one year is long behind us. Modern day developers have also begun to embrace style over pure polygons. Look at some of the most popular games of all time in the world right now. Fortnite, League, Overwatch, Minecraft. These are all games that my dumbass 15 year old self would have dismissed as kiddy, but they're thriving today because they bolstered themselves in colorful, distinct characters and settings. And with the rise of smaller, even as small as one person indie game developers, creators have thrived on a newer, more efficient game production style, giving us beautiful games that take advantage of other styles of art, all while costing a whole lot less than a new AAA game. Now I'm also not gonna lie to you and tell you that a strong visual experience isn't moving. For example, I just recently finally played God of War 4 for the first time this year, and there were some truly jaw-dropping scenes in this game that increased my enjoyment and investment in the experience. But in general, after dedicating my life to this medium and suffering some bumps along the way, I can tell you one thing. Graphics can be an important part of games, but they are nowhere close to being the most important part of games. Okay, but have you seen the Final Fantasy VII Remake graphics though? Look at Cloud, look at Tifa, Barret, Aerith, Sephiroth, everybody's so freaking hot! <laughs>